I'm Lawson Armstrong from Margaret River Organic Farmer. We're situated just outside of Rosebrook near Margaret River. Um, our farm is 65 acres and we lease 55 acres of our neighbours just to the north of us. The soil generally is a sort of sandy loam soil um, with a little bit of clay loam in different places. Yeah, but it's pretty low in most of the, the required nutrients. Obviously I, I see the importance of um, building up the um, the safe, so, you know, phosphorus and potassium um, levels. We're just sort of doing things slowly, but we're also working with um, using compost extracts and um, biodynamic preparations and vermicast and worm cast extracts. Farmers are responsible for 65% of Australia's land and you know part of that comes the responsibility of um, making sure that we create habitat and environment for all the all the animals all the native animals so if we can farm but also include and create a, an environment and habitat for our, for the native animals then then we're ticking the we, we're, we're ticking probably the most important box we want to grow enough grass for it for everyone management's probably the key I would say how you you know not leaving animals in one place for too long keeping keeping the cattle moving so as you can see there's a lot of um, mulched and um, trampled grass left here so the cattle will move out of here they won't be back here for for another probably four or five months so I, I think that's probably one of the key parts of what we're how we do things just looking at um, how the animals are actually impacting the land and making sure that that isn't inhibiting um, you know, regrowth. We move the chooks around. They have a two and a half thousand square metre cell within the electric mesh. Generally, we move them weekly, but then it also depends on how much covers in there. Where the chooks have been, they they were there this time last year, and you wouldn't know. You know, like that. Even even if you didn't do anything. The, Recovery time is probably the biggest key. Like if you give the land enough time to recover, it, it will it will recover from that and actually come back better than it was before. So, um, you know, if we had the chooks running through there every month, then that that land would never get a chance to recover. So you'll never have that diversity of species and the in the insects and um, and the different plant species wouldn't ever get a chance to um, move back into those areas. So. What I try to do every season, I, I don't always cover the whole farm. Is get a um, just get a liquid combination of um, liquid um, worm castings, compost extract, um, liquid seaweed, and fish emulsion, and I try and get that out into most paddocks every year. In some places, if I've got a cover crop in, I'll try and maybe do that two or three times. I've used biodynamic preparations in the past as well. I'm actually using the same biodynamic combination of um, cow poo and rock dust and, and calcium that you would use in the biodynamic preparations, but I'm actually using worms to convert that into worm castings. I, I think worms have um, got a, a big part to play in, in what they can add to, to that um, suite of biology and nutrients. And also they do that, and they, that's, that happens a lot faster than um, than the conversion in, in, in a cow horn. So I um, quite like to play around with the biodynamic side of things, but also use the same, use the same ingredients and, and get the worms to, um, to convert it. So yeah, I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm playing around with things like that all the time and just seeing, um, I get, we don't, we don't like to call ourselves biodynamic or, um, you know, give ourselves an actual label because I, I like to look into all sorts of different biological methods like um, Korean natural farming, biodynamics, um, 
there's a lot of really good biological farming methods out there that um, that you know I like to look into them and and see what how we can implement those here and sometimes we combine them and if people are asking about what we're doing it you know I like to say you know just um, if your inputs are positive then you know that's that's a bigger step forward you know if it is if it's not being harmful to the soil and to the microbes and to the um, insects and then you know it's a, it's going to be a good move so just try it you know that's um, that's a that's the best way to to sort of look at it initially if you're wondering what to do I, I think it's um, just really important for people to realize how much of a influence they can have on on the health of the of the environment and the land you know depending on their food choices um, you know, we, we obviously we try and do the best that we can on our farm for to tick all the environmental and food, food and nutritional health benefits of, of the of the products that we produce. But without the consumers that support us, like you know, we wouldn't we wouldn't have a business and we couldn't do this. Um, so, I think that's really important that you know every that every person can make a difference. Um, and it's also really important to actually look into to where you're your food does come from because um, you know that's I think you know getting to know your farmer at least you know making attempt to to meet them or um, having some sort of interaction is is really helpful just to have that um, connection um, and and I think even just as an example of what you know buying a, a, a dozen eggs from us it's not it's not necessarily about our what we're doing and how we we're making trying to make a difference on our farm but it's actually where the grain comes from as well but that's actually massive because the footprint of the grain that the the chooks eat I think we worked out for every every dozen eggs that someone may buy um, you know they're possibly um, contributing to something like you know 60 square meters of land that's being looked after by farmers like us in the wheat belt and you know anyone that's aware of what's going out in the grain belts and the wheat belts of Australia knows that you know there's you know things aren't so um, health environmentally healthy out there so you know I think that that's to me that's actually quite massive um, to to know that you know you can actually make not just your the initial farmer that's growing the product but it's actually um, the, the, the benefit that you're having on the environment somewhere else as well. So all our grain is um, is sourced from regenerative farmers um, and the Haggertys are one of those some of the people that we've sourced grain from, wheat in particular um, and they're probably one of the most progressive regenerative farmers in, in WA if not Australia um, so you know for us to be able to to buy grain from them knowing that you know, that we're you know helping out in other parts of the country as well. It's great to see that there's um, people like you guys that are able to um, pass the message on to a to a bigger audience so yeah thanks a lot. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you'd like to know more about Smart Soil or see more content like you've seen just then, um, be sure to sign up below and also check out our online course with Colin Sice.